It's, it's Big Hey, what is up, you guys? It is Big Marv here, and welcome back to another amazing episode of Big Marv's Network. This morning, I got a treat for you guys. We got George and Manny on the show. These guys are the founders of Expert Freedom, and they help coaches, consultants, and experts achieve their own life of freedom every day of the week. So, guys, welcome to the show. How are you guys doing this morning? Thanks for the intro. Yeah. <laughs> Thank that was you. Amazing intro. I love that. Very good. So, for those of you guys that don't know, have or seen Manny and George, I've tagged them in a few posts right now. Uh, these guys are actually my personal coaches because I believe that to succeed in business, you really need coaches. It's something I struggled with in the beginning. In the beginning, I was one of those entrepreneurs that was like, I'm going to learn and do everything by myself. You know, I kept falling on my face consistently for a year before I've hired my first coach and then it was game changing and now I, I have different coaches for every area of life and it's been amazing so um, again oh, yeah. honor to have you guys on the show thanks for tuning in but today I just want to dive in a little bit deeper and see kind of your backstory what what guys what got you guys started and uh, what got, what keeps you guys going so Manny, you're here on the top to the left of me, so I'm going to start with you. What? How did you get started? Um, you know, and how how long have you been in the game now? Yeah, sure. So like, our stories are quite different, but like they kind of intervene at one point. So I'll, I'll kind of go across those. So I basically started when I was like 13, and I searched online how to make money online. And I kid you not, I came across Russell Brunson's thing about, like, it must have been about affiliate marketing or something like that. So like, I started to take an interest into like affiliate marketing and looking at ClickBank and all that stuff. And um, I never really pulled the trigger. I mean, I was still 13. I wasn't like committed to anything. So I'm just like playing around. Um, but anyway, that's what kind of introduced me to the online marketing world. And a couple of years down the line, I started going to like these business events, these business seminars. And I met someone who was selling her like a course online and she wanted my help with funnels because I was quite tech savvy at that point. And uh, she wanted my help with funnels. She gave me like loads of learning materials and she's like, can you learn this? And like, help me do it. I'm like, awesome, let's try this. So I kind of built funnels and played around for a bit for like a year or so, dabbling in Facebook ads, like selling a $7 product on, on Facebook ads. It was, it was fun, like, some, like I think we did get some sales. Obviously it wasn't profitable at $7. But um, that's what kind of like really gave me a, a, a deeper insight into the online marketing world. I'm like, holy crap, like this is amazing. Like you can build stuff on the, your laptop and like make money. Like what the hell? Like this is what goes against what everything my parents said. Um, so anyway, again, being a teenager and all, like I was still not committed to anything. So like I had this online marketing thing, and, but I also wanted to like get into finance, into trading. So I followed my passion to go into trading and I started like working for this brokerage firm in London in, in Canary Wharf. And I think a couple of weeks later, they hired George here uh, to do our online marketing. And when we met, we kind of really hit it off. Like we shared our passion, our love for online marketing. And like I shared with him what I was doing. He's like, yeah, I know ClickFunnels too. It's like, holy crap. Like, you know, we both know ClickFunnels. No one else knows ClickFunnels that I've met. So you're the only person I've met. Um, and yeah, we just ended up working together in the end. Like once we finished working at the brokerage, we kind of just messaged George up saying like, hey, like, do you need any help? Can I work for you? It's like, yeah, come on, like, like let's, let's do some products together. So we started doing that. About a year later, we decided to like just officially partner up and, and start Expert Freedom together. And then oh. that's how Expert Freedom was born, huh? That's right, yeah. yeah. That was the, the ground groundbreaking moment. It's like, oh <laughs> shit, oh man, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like the only one on the planet of like building funnels and being online and trying to make sales online <laughs> well there's always two sides to every story so george let's hear let's hear your rendition of uh how 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 did you get started how did you get into mantis and uh how did how'd you guys form the expert freedom family yeah for sure so really strange but what Mantis just said about being 13 and wanting to do um, 
affiliate marketing just sounds exactly the same as what I did at 13. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I didn't even know that about you. That's <laughs> jokes. Um, basically, when I was about 13, I started spread betting. And I started um, literally the tiny bit of money that my parents had given me, like a couple of hundred pounds or something. I'd be like, whoa, spread betting. Let me go and make a load of money really, really quickly and do spread betting. And so I started doing it. And then the money just went really, really quickly, really down. And then I didn't have any debt. In about a day, I lost it all just in a day. And then I realized this is really not what I want to be doing. So I luckily stopped doing that. And then I started to look at uh, affiliate marketing because I found this guy called, I think his name's Adam Scott. Adam Scott, his name is. He's, a, he's, an, he's an internet marketer, the first guy I found. I watched his webinar and he was talking about creating niche uh, specific sites that you would create, let's say in like the fish space. And then you would do SEO and get traffic to it, get them in your lead magnets and then sell them a ClickBank product on the back end. And so I got really interested in this. And instead of buying his product, I just reverse engineered this law of attraction like funnel. And it was um, like a quiz funnel. And you would go through it and you would like basically find out your like what your life is going to be like, your law of attraction stuff. So I literally verbatim copied this massive website called lawofattraction.com. It's like a multi-million dollar company. I was like, I'll just copy what they're doing and change the, change the questions slightly. But I just basically modeled it. And I, and I created this uh, funnel when I was 14 or 15 at the time. And I was like, great, I've got something. Now let's go run some ads. So I had no idea what I was doing. I was 14. 15 years like, old. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> and I went and uh, started running Bing ads. So if anyone started running Bing ads, Bing ads are the one. And started running these Bing ads, like law of attraction. And I actually started to get leads. And I was like, oh, what? This actually works. I'm getting leads. I'm just, Jesus. And so I started doing that. And then I realized quickly that, well, I don't have enough money to keep in the ads because no one was buying the clickbank product from the emails so i didn't really understand how that all worked at all and so i had to stop doing that and i just like let it sit in my uh, hard drive like collecting dust like just didn't even think about it i actually think i have that funnel somewhere it's quite a good one <laughs> then, yeah i've got it i've got it saved and then i um went to university because i was like right i don't know what i want to do i'm going to go study business at a good uni over here in the uk and I went and did that. And whilst I was at the uni, I started a, a t-shirt brand selling t-shirts. And I um, created this t-shirt with like dogs all over it, like this stupid dog t-shirt. <laughs> I just so see stupid. you making something like that. <laughs> 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 and um, I made this t-shirt and people literally started buying it. And I was like, oh, what? So all my friends at uni, they bought some to support me and then I got some celebrities on Twitter back in the day when you could just tweet people back in 2012 and they would actually respond. I messaged a few like celebrities over in the UK, send them the t-shirt, they would do it and they would wear it. I made some sales yeah. from that. Anyway, I started doing that and then I had another, basically it was hard to make money from the t-shirt company because you had to reinvest the money back into the product, back into stock and then run ads. It was a very capital intensive business and I didn't have a lot of capital right then and uh, like I was a uni student. So then I stopped doing that and started a social media agency with one of my friends back at uni and did that for two or three years and got the, the, the love for selling high ticket services. And it's like selling something for a lot more money than like a t-shirt. And I really liked the client interaction and working with clients and like talking with them. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, but then a couple of years later down the line, me and that business partner, we didn't really vibe together. We just didn't vibe. It was just like this vibe just didn't work. And so I sat there next to him feeling like really crappy one day and was just like, look, dude, this isn't working for me. And so he, he paid me some money to leave and I left and I was like, cool. And then I just didn't have anything, no degree, no nothing. And that's when this woman called me out of the blue. She's like, hey, I need you to work for us. It's like, what the hell? Why do you need me to work for you? Like, I'm a nobody <laughs> right here. Like, I am literally nobody. She was like a big time investor. Forex trader, she'd make multi millions. Like, how the hell did she find me? She's like, I found you on LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn profile is great. Luckily, my LinkedIn profile was really optimized at the time. <laughs> so she, she called me up and I went to the office, to the brokerage where I met Mantas. And I met him there. 
and we sat down and we started like basically building funnels together and like trying to build this campaign to get bums on the seats to her educational event so that they could sell their high ticket coaching program for the um, Forex trading stuff. So that's really where we got into the whole education, selling education and those types of products was, was there. And then since then, since then, Manny and I have really started working exclusively with people selling courses and coaching programs and really helping them to, to grow. And Mantas was actually, he worked for me and I was paying him. And he, at one point he was making more money than I was. I was paying him more money than I was. <laughs> and I was like, what? And then one day uh, the business hit like a real downward spiral and we literally lost all yeah. of our clients. Worse, yeah, we were like abroad. So like I was in Bali and George was like, I think you were in Amsterdam when shit hit the fans. So we were just like trying to live this nomad freedom lifestyle. Like when there's like fires everywhere, like everything's falling apart. <laughs> Not feeling like it at all. Like no money for like a few months. We were literally hustling hard and we were trying to make things work. And so instead of Mantas going away and like, like, fuck you, George, I'm leaving. <laughs> he, he just said, let's do this together so we partnered up and ever since then like we've just gone from strength to strength and learning from our mistakes learning from failures and and really making things work uh, and it's been amazing so yeah that's how we came to be so before like shit hit the fan and you guys were just running your business you guys weren't this this team that you are today like this yin and yang that feed on each other and help people in expert freedom like what what were you guys doing together as a business like when manny was making more money than you and and he was essentially your contractor living a life in bali and you were back at home putting fires out yeah, uh, yeah. what were you guys doing then were you like a, a service level agency just running ads like you were doing before yeah so so we would take on so from that first event we actually met a couple of the speakers at that event and those speakers became like high ticket clients paying us like 10 grand kind of thing. Um, and we, from the back of that, we'd get more clients like that to build. Basically we would just build webinar funnels. We would get good at creating the webinar funnel and I got really good at creating the webinar itself. I got very into like the copywriting and how all the psychology works and I got very, very good at the webinars and um, Mantas is basically doing all the other work is that right Manny? <laughs> like what were you doing i think so i can remember yeah like the funnel design we ended up getting a small team as well i think of like people across the world just managing projects but i mean i remember me doing ads like i fell in love with the ads part for sure like, that was my main memory but like also you know just doing small tweaks in the funnels like sometimes even just building them out by the design doing all the tech stuff that comes with it, like all the little nitty gritty tasks that like are really tiny, but like just Amazing. really important. Tracking, whatever it may be, yeah. Um, so Manny would do all those parts and then I would be doing like the front end, talking to them and selling and that kind of stuff. Um, so you guys had like the beauty and the brains going on? <laughs> pretty, much. <laughs> pretty much, yeah, it's actually pretty annoying. Pretty. It's good, but it, it was a bit weird because like, because Manny was wasn't we weren't business partners. It was it was almost like I would tell Manny what to do, like do this, do that kind of thing. <laughs> and it like yeah, that was fine at the time because I was paying Manny da da da. But after a while, when you work with someone, it gets a bit weird when that's the situation. And uh, the energy, like the vibe, didn't work like that after a while. And so you know, over the years that we've been working together, we've come to this space where we're like, you know, we're we're both the same, like. Because at the time, Manny didn't know what the bank account looked like or what the money situation was like. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, I wouldn't say anything like that to him. And then as we became partners, like the clarity and the transparency of the whole business changed and made me feel way more supported. Even though at the time I was like, oh, I don't want to show Manny these things or that thing or the other things. Um, so yeah. It's definitely an interesting transition, like going from, because at the time, yeah, like the agreement was, yeah, I was working for you for a company and whatever, then just a transition of going to like partnership. You know, most people don't think about it, but it's actually quite strange, even on a psychological level. Cause like now you're working with your boss who's like expecting you to like step up and like make, like, make decisions, like liaise with them instead of just being told what to do, which is like a whole different kind of mindset. 
Um, so that was an interesting transition. Definitely like didn't, wasn't aware of that before. So what, what was kind of your guys's like aha moment? Like, uh, because you know, you, you started out as pretty much an agency that was running campaigns and helping other expert coaches and, and consultants get out there, get their voice out there and build their tribe. But you weren't necessarily building, you know, your own tribe at that point. You know, you guys weren't the faces. You guys were the back end guys making all the money and things for these. So, like, can you guys kind of ex explain your experience, you know, making that transition and how did it come to you to be like, man, we could do this. We could be these experts that, that is teaching and training people um, to get to success. What, what was that like for you? Any questions? Well, we, we basically did a big launch for this um, personal development guy and he had a pretty big audience and we did this launch and it was the first time that we'd ever sold a product for like, I think it was 4K without a phone conversation, like boom, like without a phone conversation, we, we were selling these things and we were like, oh right, we can actually do this. We can actually make really good money from the system that we put together that we built. And I think certainly for me, that was a bit of an aha moment to give myself that confidence to say, we can actually do this and our thing does work. And um, that was one of the turning points because once you have a key result, once you've been able to help someone get something really, really great, you can replicate that and you can keep improving that process and keep making that better. Um, and I think at the time we discovered a webinar, I think it might have been like clients on demand webinar. I think it was their webinar. And I was like, holy crap, like we can just do this. Like, well, why aren't we doing this? What's, what's going on here? And the feeling of having to constantly be barraged by the client, like the client expects this of you, expects that of you. You're like literally the, their bitch. <laughs> I didn't like that feeling. That was not what I wanted. I was, I'm not anyone's bitch. So um, <laughs> certainly for me, I didn't want to do that anymore and feel like that. Um, projects go wrong, things happen, like they're not happy, even though you put in all this work. Da, da, da. Um, so that was one of the turning points for me. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's the same project as well. I remember like, you know, working on it, like it was just so hard. It was like the main one we were working on for like months on end to get it right. And then like launch day came and it launched and it did really well. I think it, it was like the nine or 10 K in like overnight, basically from a webinar without a sales call. Um, it's like a webinar was dope, but it's just like a couple of weeks later, you know, we were winning. It's like, it felt like a baby. It was growing. And then the client just like decided the results weren't high conversing enough and decided to leave. Um, and at that point, it's just like, you know, you've been working with this client on something that might as well have been yours. Like you, you put in pretty much that amount of work. Uh, and it's just like gone, like that's it. It was so promising, it was so exciting and just gone. So I think for me, it kind of made sense at that point to kind of like, if we're gonna do that again for someone, it, it should be us. Like putting it in and like owning that yeah. asset so that we can optimize it, we can be in control of it, yeah. So you guys basically had that. So is, would you say that's where expert freedom was born? You guys like, how, how did that conversation go? Were you guys just having a beer talking about the campaign? Like, man, we just really killed it on that campaign. Like, and which one of you guys said, well, fuck, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's be the yin and yang and make, make this thing happen. And we're going to be the face here. So, I moved to Amsterdam to live in Amsterdam. And um, when I moved there, that's when pretty much all of our clients decided to leave. And we didn't, we had like maybe a couple of projects on the go, but nothing really amazing. And then I was just on the phone to Manny cycling along one day. And I was thinking like, we could put a webinar together. Like we could do this, we could do this. Um, but dude, I have no money to pay you. Like, just, like <laughs> I just don't have any money to pay you. Da, da, da. Why don't we, why don't we just do this together? I can't remember if it's Manny that said that or if I was, if it was me who said that. It was, I, it was me. Yeah, I said that. And um, I, so I like, could see yeah. George be the being the one that's like, come on, man, I need you, bro. Like, <laughs> we, I have this idea. 
but I need the funnel guy in the back end. Like I need Especially to, at the time, yeah. I was, a, know, I was a shy little kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And um and then I sat in the library in Amsterdam trying to come up with a name because the old business was like uh, GTP Digital. It was just like a name for an agency. It was like boring, like nothing cool about it. Disturbing the peace. <laughs> yeah. Is that oh, is that what DTP stood for? That <laughs> yeah, just my name, my initials. Oh, just, GTP. I thought you said D, yeah. like Delta. Disturbing the peace. <laughs> <laughs> I was like disturbing the peace. Okay, All that's right. actually a pretty good name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like that. And um, I was sat there and I was thinking, shit, if we're going to do something, I want to make it about truly like creating this freedom because we hadn't had, like we weren't experienced. We made like good money. I was making like really good money, but I didn't have any freedom. And at the end of the day, I didn't have much money because I was spending it all on staff and stuff like that. Um, and so we're like, we want to have a freedom business. We want to create this freedom and we're experts. So why don't we call it like, expert freedom and i went on domain and the domain was free and i was like Gum, let's do it let's get that domain <laughs> so we got that domain and then that was our start of our journey of trying to work out how to sell a program and how to get high ticket clients for that and so on um so yeah that was the beginning of the journey uh, you guys are clearly successful now and i get i can see you guys growing more and more every day as I consume your content and get retargeted by your ads and retargeted by your marketing campaigns. You know, I can see you guys growing a bit even more just in the last nine months since I've been working with you guys. Um, but let, let's talk about like your first expert freedom client. How was it there in the beginning? Did, when you did finally get that first client, was it like you expected it to be? Yeah. Um, really? Well, uh, well, we've got to, so, so before getting the clients for the program, like I was pretty confident in my ability to make high ticket sales for services and stuff like that. Like I was good at selling, like I could sell, not a problem. But then but when, when we sold a program, it was like, wow, I've actually sold something and I'm not going to have to do the work. Like they're going to have to do the work. This is like game changing here. And so we sold the program and we built the program a week ahead. Like they would do like this week and then we'd create the next week and we just based it pretty much on like Russell's stuff, quite a lot of it on Russell's stuff. So if you went to look back at our video training from then, it's just like, oh, this is like the expert secrets book, which is like regurgitated in some videos. Uh, plus our own experience from helping the client obviously get his amazing result and other clients results with, um, with our process. And, but we hit loads of snags because the people that we were helping, who we got in that first program, I think we had three people in our launch. And then we 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 did we sold it for like like six k each or something like that. I think it was seven actually. I remember. It's quite good. Okay. And we got these three people in, and then they got to the webinar part, and that's when we realised, oh right, these people haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> they are not going to do this webinar because they don't have a clue, and so. I ended up building their webinars for them. And I think Manny ended up building some of their stuff for them anyway. Funnels and ads, I think, yeah. Just to get them over the line and, and get that finished and you know, make sure they actually had something that would, would work. And that's where we really learned a lot about the delivery process and how it's really important to have a simple process as well. Um, so you can do it and they can actually do the work. Like, otherwise we're gonna have to do it for them anyway <laughs> so uh so yeah it was a really really interesting uh time when we when we got those few clients on on the first program well, I, as someone who understands the tech and i've been in that position myself where i'll have a student and i'm just like fuck they're just not getting it. you know what fuck it i'm gonna build your funnel and write all your automations for you just shoot me this fucking video and then we'll go from there Right. So Manny, when you were building those first couple client funnels out, like uh what what was that like for you? Did you did you hit any walls and what, what pushed you to say, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna do this for them to to get them to get them over this hump and like what what was that experience like for you? It was terrifying. Honestly, like 
again, back then, I wasn't this like forward front facing guy who was like comfortable talking to lots of people. Imagine like the most anxious kid in school who doesn't talk to anyone, who's like scared of his own shadow. That was basically me. <laughs> so for me to explain a foreign concept about tech to a client, we're actually doing it myself. Well, doing it myself, like always, yeah. was always the decision I decided to make. Um, which obviously seemed great at the time, like, yeah, I'll do it quicker, I'll do it better. But honestly, that's not really helping a client. And I realized this not too long ago, if you, do it, if you don't do it yourself, you're taking that responsibility away from a client because they're not going to learn, they're not going to be able to do it themselves when they have to. Um, but anyway, so the main snag for me was like, just how do I explain this to a client? And, you know, I had WhatsApp, so like I didn't actually have to face a client WhatsApp, I could hide behind my phone. So I could try and explain it there, but typically just building out the funnels and like researching different ways of tracking it. Um, Cause by that point we had some templates from previous clients we worked with. So it, it helped in terms of design and like how it would actually be structured. So I didn't have to like worry about what kind of funnel design, what kind of structure to have. It was just really building it out for them. Um, but for me, what I realized as well, it's also quite hard to reflect the client's design, theme, kind of vibe, your own language into a funnel if you're building it for them from scratch, right? Because like, you don't know the market like you do. Uh, they don't, you don't know the market like they do. You don't really understand them like they do, obviously. So trying to build a funnel that's supposed to reflect their authority, their personal character, their attractive character, um, it was really, really difficult. And it took many, many, many iterations to do that. And a lot of frustration from both myself, George, and the client as well, because like, we're like, oh, nothing's getting right. And we're like, we're trying our hardest. Like, you're not giving us anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of back and forth, but eventually we kind of managed to systemize that and, and start to kind of make it flow a bit smoother, especially when we got like, the client's input and we sat down with them and said like, look, we'll help you with this. But, like, here's why we're helping you with this. It's going to be better than if we do it for you. Um, so yeah, that's. Is there, were, were there any days where you just kind of wanted to throw your, throw your laptop out the window and say, fuck this. And, uh, and if you did have those days, like how, how did you push through and like come back and just make it happen? Like what, what, what was your, what was your key to pushing through those bullshit days? Ooh. That's a good question. I think for a lot of it, having George by the side really helped. Cause like, if I didn't have, if I didn't know something, then he would help me figure it out. Um, and like calm me down and like make me realize the situation for what it is. Like, like if you don't know, just ask a client. Or if you don't know, like here's what you should try. Um, and that helped a lot. I think definitely having a business partner kind of kept me sane and kept me from, as you said, from a laptop 50 feet away. Um, but yeah, just like, obviously a lot of people don't have that, right? We don't have a business partner. So I would recommend just kind of sitting down and, taking a breath, realizing message, like what's the actual problem? And like, mm -hmm. you know, not, not having any ego around it, not having any emotion around it, just see like, if you don't know what it is, like how do I find it out? Or if I don't know how to do it, like how do I find out how do I learn it? Like, what do I need to go about learning it? How do, what do I need to go about finding it out? Um, sounds a bit weird, but yeah, so kind of what helped me kind of be able yeah. to manage that. I, I can easily see George being that guy for you because uh, I personally, this is something like I've actually been struggling with a lot lately because right? as you guys know, I'm transitioning from like being the guy that did the agency stuff and ran it for everybody else to now being the, the coach and helping people through the process. And George is the one that taught me what I use every time I hit one of those bullshit moments. And that's take a breath. You've already won the game of life. You know, like that, just that alone. Uh, if, I, if I feel myself like getting frustrated, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this funnel. Fuck these people. Fuck this group. You know, I'm just ready to close it down. And I'm just like, no, oh, remember what you said. You already won. You already won. You know, like. What's the word? That was going to be the tomorrow, you know, like, so George is the one that really helped push me through that. And that's what, what I use. But George, you can't always be the guy that's pushing people through. I know you hit your walls too. So 
what what do you do to help push yourself past those uh, bullshit days? Great question. That man there. <laughs> man does. So he, he's got some weird, crazy vibe of being really calm. Even may, maybe inside he's probably like screaming. But on the outside, he's like super chilled out and calm. And he really helps me because I have these hissy fits. I like, I'm like, go a bit nuts sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so Mantas like reins me in and calms me down. But apart from Mantas being so great as he is, um, what else helps me to, to stay on uh, a good form when you feel like you just want to throw everything at the wall, which happens, happens quite a lot. You know, we all have that. Um, so what helps me is I like going on a walk. It really helps me. I just go for an hour or half an hour walk. Just if everything's just crap, I go for a walk. I feel a lot better after a good walk in nature. Um, another thing is always making sure you have your morning formula and you're reading that every day. Because I've, I've started doing this more and more and more. Essentially, like you're, you're, you're creating a vision of where you want to be in terms of who you are. And just making sure you're reminding yourself of that and constantly reading out like statements that are really positive like every morning like I excel at whatever I do I have positive expectancy I know I am here to win like people know me for winning just reading things like that every single day I literally have affirmations literally sat right there in front of me and reading them just fuels your brain with the right um the right phrases that will keep reverberating in your brain the whole time and make you more positive make you make you more powerful another thing is just doing a video, like a live video, like just doing one of them or, or, or a Facebook uh, live just makes me so much more confident. Even if, if I was feeling really low energy today, really low, uh, didn't really want to do anything, quickly make a live video, I'm back, I'm back, like I'm, I'm back in like power zone, you know? Back in the so, zone. Yeah, yeah, back in the zone. So those couple things would be what I'd recommend for anyone if they, you know, want to get out of that kind of headspace um but then just always remembering taking deep breaths and connecting with your breath and putting two feet on the ground and just like putting your feet literally on the ground taking your shoes off and just putting your feet on the ground taking a really massive deep breath and feeling your feet on the ground that thing works so damn well as well can i just add to your feet stay grounded i I, and i can see so Manny's like the Zen master of the group, and George is like the high energy channeling the Zen master's energy. And you guys just kind of like like this, mess you? together. You're like, yeah. <laughs> you're like the you're like the Buddha man. You're like yeah, like. You know, <laughs> 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 like mm-hmm. <laughs> uh. Big mob man. What you said earlier as well, like, um, you know, this whole thing, like, yeah, you've already won at life. Sometimes, and this might not work for everyone, it's going to sound counterintuitive as hell, but sometimes like when things just get too much or like too stressful and like you think the world is like throwing shit against you 24 seven. Um, for me, what works is just thinking like, fuck it, like let it all happen. Give it your yeah. worst. If my business dies, I don't fucking care. Just like go sit on a sofa, just chill. Like if your business is your clients are like whatever, like my clients are chatting down on WhatsApp or whatever, just say, whatever, I'm just taking a day off. Fuck it. I don't care if you leave. I don't care if my business fails. And obviously, like, because all these problems you typically build up in your head, like two or even three times as worse as they actually are, you know, they're not going to kill you in a day. If like, if you leave them and don't touch them and don't react to them for a day, nothing's going to happen. So when you do that, you kind of detach from those problems. Um, and when you come back, like you do, you always come back. You just think I was being, I was reacting. I was building up too much after a while you come back to them and you're like, oh, actually, this is quite easy. Like, and you're back. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was actually one of the biggest revelations I've had this year. You know, just my personality and my demeanor, I've always carried kind of like a fucking attitude. Right? I al- yeah. I've always believed that everything in life happens for a reason. You might not know the reason right now, but there's a reason that you're going through whatever it is you're going through. Right. And so I, I, I kind of have always had this, you know, fuck it to me. And like, I, I always make a joke that we're all, we're all born with a vial of fucks, you know, and as you go through life, you take some of those fucks out and you stop and eventually you're going to run out of fucks to give, you know, and then like Microsoft drink completely drained me of my bucket jar. So like, 
I haven't had a fuck to give in five years. <laughs> but George helped me realize that that was just all bullshit because I had, you know, my own self doubt and, and imposter syndrome and things that I had to push through. And it, it wasn't until, you know, I think it was six weeks ago, George and I had a conversation and he was like, uh, and, and I was like on the verge of tears just going through like all the bullshit that I was going through and George is like no but what's the worst that's gonna happen mate and I was just like nothing you know he's like exactly fuck it because you know, you know I, I had really built up you know like I was like I got my morning routine you know I got I got these things that I'm doing I feel like I'm killing it because I feel like I'm being really productive every day but the cells aren't coming in. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong. And I'm working seven days a week. And then that's when George is like, dude, dude, take a breath. You've always, you've already won. You know, you need to fucking take a day out. Then he challenged me. He's like, all right, so this Friday, you're going to turn your laptop off. You're not going to look at it again until Monday. I'm going to challenge you to do that. And then you'd be amazed at how productive the following week was just by giving my brain a rest for two days you know so it, it wasn't until i it, i thought i didn't really give a fuck but it wasn't until that moment that i finally broke through had that aha like wow you know like i'm putting so much pressure on myself when i don't need to be you know yeah. and i think so much better when i actually say yeah i need to get off the laptop by this time so i can wake up refreshed in the morning to hit it again because you might be sitting there trying to do work you're sitting there for three or four hours but you're not really being productive you know you're just because you, you got so much pressure and all the things and like i don't know about you guys i have a couple monitors so it's really easy for me to be like work on this for 10 minutes and then work on this for 10 minutes and work on this for 10 minutes and then four hours goes by and then you're still like well what the fuck have I done with today? Like, I, I did all this shit, but what have I really done today? And, like, that was the biggest revelation for me was, like, just literally stop giving a fuck, take a breath, you've won life, get in and really put out the process. So, I mean, and, and that's one of the things that keeps me coming back. That's one of the things that keeps me having coaches because I never had these breakthroughs. I never had these aha moments until I had guys like you because you know that I I'm always looking to like what's the next level I gotta go to how do I progress as a human being how do I get to that next level and for me it's always networking and seeking out guys like you who have walked a similar path but maybe you're just a level above me you know so because mm -hmm. it's, it's not necessarily a shortcut but it's like well, you guys have already got the machete out and went through the jungle and cut me a path and you can help me hit the when i hit these roadblocks you can say dude i've already cut a path right there just walk right through the woods right there you'll be solid you know and some entrepreneurs like nah I, I got two machetes i'll cut my own path fuck that you know and uh so yeah love the analogy <laughs> yeah so i i think that that really is like for for me personally, that's what helps me get through my bullshit days was finally one having a coach to push me. So it seems like you guys kind of push each other to be the best version of yourselves. You're committed to each other's success. So I think that I, I can see that that's what helps you guys succeed. But do you guys also have coaches? Do you do you guys also utilize other people to progress yourselves to the next level? Yeah, like we know the importance of coaches as well as you do. Um, you know, for a while, like maybe George has a different kind of viewpoint on this, but for a while, I generally think we try to reinvent the wheel instead of like just kind of passing with some cash, coughing up some cash to invest in like a program or like, an, obviously not just like any program, but in a program that would take us to where we wanted to go. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not saying I've got regrets, like we are, we're, we're here where we are now because of that, but like, it definitely would have made things a lot clearer, um, especially at the start of our journey, like it would have made 
a, a path to getting more clients, a path to growing, a path to scaling a lot more clearer instead of just going back and forth doing like the wrong things where looking back at it now is like stupid shit are we doing? We could have avoided, but yeah, I mean, those you don't learn the lesson without come, going through that kind of mistake, right? So, yeah, for some reason, I think there's humans like myself, you know, like for whatever reason, I just want to fall flat on my face and hit concrete as hard as I can before I finally say, All right, somebody help me out. I officially I can't, <laughs> you know, what well, I don't know why, as humans, we need to hit our face on the ground so hard before you go. uh reaching out george how do you feel about that you you are you on the same page there yeah yeah i mean coaches um so maybe i'm a little bit well we have coaches <laughs> so without a coach so our coach jonathan like he's like next level genius guy and um i literally want to pay him until he's in his grave um so we love him and love Last couple of weeks, guys, thinking about this new like uh, strategy that I wanted to deploy, this new uh, offer that I was thinking of launching, and literally speaking to him, I realised that was just going to waste months and like just be stupid, like because there's so much more juice to get out of what we're already doing. And if I didn't have that conversation with him, just that tiny half an hour conversation, an hour, I would have gone in the completely wrong direction and be another two months behind where we really want to be. So. That's taught me, it's put me in this, like molded me into this like line, this straight line of doing one thing and making it really, 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 really good. Instead of like doing this thing, doing this thing, doing this thing, doing this thing, doing this thing. Oh, I'll go try that thing. Oh, what's trying up? Like it's really molded me into this mindset of like, like this one thing and make that one thing really work. And so more and more and more every single day as more decisions come in more like options more ideas i just get rid of them all i just literally no 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 i'm doing this thing doing this thing doing this thing doing this thing and then looking at the data points along what we're doing to fix certain things in what we're doing instead of like trying to add new things i'm like trying to like not add anything and um, that's kind of place where my mind is now and so, um, speaking speaking of uh, coaches and offers, <laughs> tell 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 everyone where they can find you guys if if they want to look you guys up and uh, find out a little bit more about you. Nice, the best place. Click on our face. If this is in Facebook, maybe you're listening on a podcast, so we'll tell you about that. But if you're on Facebook, you're you're watching us there. You can click on one of our faces and go to our profiles. And from the profile, you can find our group. So our group's called Tribe of Experts. If you go onto Facebook and you type in Tribe of Experts in search bar, you're listening to this on audio, then you can find Tribe of Experts and that's our group. And in the group, we share a lot of different strategies and um, ideas and uh, systems, free systems for helping you scale your expertise, your coaching business, your consulting business, um, up to wherever you want to take it to. Okay, we've taken clients to 50 to 150. So we know exactly what to do around that. And we share that in our group. So that's the best place to go and connect with us is the Tribe of Experts group. Central point for everything else. Oh, what, what was that one more time, Annie? It's like the central point for everything you want. Oh, yeah. Tribe everything you want to get from us. It's an amazing group. I love it. I'm part of it, obviously. Uh, and Yes, they do help people scale, but I, I want to tell you guys my personal story and why oh. I keep these guys around, you know. So I first met scared? these guys last year. Um, it, it was very, it was at a, like, I would say the peak of my big more personal brand. You know, this is when the Wavemaker process was starting to take off. We had built a couple seven figure brands with it. And I was really like starting to hit, but I hit a wall. I could not get past 20K a month. I was just like, man, it would really be nice to hit break through that barrier. And at the time I was getting different people pitching me every day of the week. And then enters my inbox, George, right? But George approached me differently than everybody else that had pitched me at that point. 
George talked to me. He found out a little bit about my business, what I was going through. And like, he was just like, let's hop on the phone and chat. And then we chatted. I'm a big systems guy. And so then he told me the stack that he uses. And then he told me what he's going through and what he takes clients through. And I was like, okay, well, you know, that really aligns with me. That really aligns to my stack. I can see like he's clearly a level above me. I could just implement his process. Could, so me, I would, when I make decisions, it's all logic, no emotion. Okay, so lo- I was just looking at it logically. At that point, I didn't give a fuck who George was. I was I was looking at George's process, and I was like, this guy gets systems. I could plug this guy into my system, and whether he's a fucking dick or not, I can reverse engineer his system. Okay, so that that's where it was for me, and. So George and Manny have watched me the first month I was in EFA. I hit 50K. I was like, holy shit. Okay, this guy's process fucking works. I was like, nail down and keep doing it. Next month, 60K. I was like, fuck. Yes, George and Manny. This, this is the fucking shit. And then I was working 80 hours a week. And I was like, so not only did they help me fucking scale ridiculously fast, but they also helped me see the flaws in myself they they actually helped me discover that i absolutely hated the agency life i absolutely hated doing what i was doing they they watched me rise quickly crash and burn and now they're helping me build back up and if i didn't have coaches i'd probably still be crashing and burning right now trying to figure out how do i get past 20k you know so um I think that's just the the importance of finding guys like this, finding coaches, finding people, mentors that are are relative to you and your journey and that are going to help you progress to that next level because they've been invested in not only my success, my monetary success, but in my progression and growth as a human being. And they've, they've helped me attain the levels of being just being a human through our coaching sessions that I don't think you can get out of any course, you know? So I just want to take a minute to thank you guys one more time for, for being here on the show, doing everything that you do for the expert freedom community and uh, just showing up every day because what you guys do is an incredibly value valuable. And I can't wait to see, you know, where the next level takes us. So, before before we get out of here, do, I, do you guys have any last last words or phrases you'd like to depart with the audience? Um, all right, I go first. I go first. Big Mom, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Like it takes two to tango, and you are really coachable person. Like you really want to grow, and you're like you've changed so much over the time we've been working together. Uh, that's amazing. Something I'll leave for your audience uh, or everyone who's watching this or listening to this and you want to grow a great online business and you want to feel that freedom as well of being in your power, in your center and not having to work 80 hour weeks. Just remember this, like it takes consistent effort and you've got to fall in love with it. And there's going to be days where it just feels like total crap and you want to give up like loads of times you'll want to go throw in the towel like all the time even when you're making loads of money you'll want to throw in the towel because it's like not working how you want it to work but um you've got to stick at it and keep doing it because it's really about the market and who you're serving it's really about them and you have to come to this selfless place where you are just serving them and the money will come back to you and be will be returned to you once you step into that power of being yourself and just sharing yourself and how you can help others with that knowledge and expertise. And that's really where you can start to have a lot of fun with it. Like a lot of fun. Like I feel like we have loads of fun. Right now. Absolutely. I could not have said it better myself. <laughs> what about you, Manny? Yeah, man. Like honestly, like, Mark, man, like, your growth over the last, what, nine, ten months has been just ridiculous. Not obviously just in terms of revenue, but in terms of, as a person, like what you've decided to pursue and what you've decided to go through, honestly, like, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see um, where you take this. It's going to be pretty epic, I imagine. But yeah, with the audience, 
it's it's I don't know like I don't know where your audience are at like are they just starting out are they going through you know a phase of scaling but whatever it is the, the the key to kind of really keeping your sanity in business and keeping your sanity whilst creating what it is you're creating um you know your legacy is just to really strive to keep it simple like the the things you put in place now are going to grow are going to branch out and are going to take life on their own so if you put too many things down right now and we're going to do all that like it's going to be impossible to manage all of them and you won't be able to systemize any of you more be able to scale any of it and you just have this kind of chaotic project business whatever it is you're building going on and you'll start to really hate it and we've been there i've been there whether it's in business or whether it's been with like other projects it happens and it's fractal it happens everywhere you go so if you kind of adopt this motto of like i want to simplify and do everything i do i want to do as simple as possible and keep it as simple as possible you know pull the levers that actually have the biggest impact and nothing else matters that's truly like the key to to scaling um whatever it is you're doing okay oh, i love it well again thank you guys so much for being on the show you guys thank you so much for tuning in if you're if you're listening uh don't forget to tune back in every friday where we sit down with an entrepreneur and tell their story or in this case a group of entrepreneurs tell their stories and what kind of impacts they're going to make on the world if you'd like to be featured on the show don't forget to visit bigmarvelsnetwork.com fill out the quick application and book your spot i'd love to chat with you and see what kind of impact and journey you're making on this world this is big marv thank you guys so much for tuning in one love